the key to amortization is that it is a combination of principal and interest. That's where you get that curve that's dying off. Remember in the straight loan, for you math majors in the audience, a vertical line is a curve. It separated the interest and then just the principal. Now that curve goes down and you get a portion of interest, I'm sorry, principal and interest on every payment. But as that curve goes down, the principal goes up and the interest amount goes down. Here's my level payment. Here's the curve now. So here, a little principal, a lot of interest. As time goes by, now here I've got a lot of principal and a little interest. All right? So just because I can, and I know it's fun, and it will form beads of sweat on you guys, after my second payment, how much do I owe? After my second payment, how much do I owe? 99.5. It is exactly not 99.5. So you don't take the 250 that's already the principal from the current balance? No, because why, Shauna? I don't owe $100,000 anymore. Oh, so my and my principal. So you have to now redo that entire calculation. Only the difference here is you take six percent of the of ninety-nine thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Divided by twelve, okay. it turns out to be, if I'm doing this by memory, like. Four hundred and ninety-one dollar ninety-one seventy-five or something like that. Four ninety-eight seventy-five. Four ninety-eight seventy-five. Right? Yeah. Does that number make sense to you? Just as a general concept, what was first month's interest payment? Like five hundred dollars, wasn't it? And I I told you several times that curve goes down. So the second month's interest payment should be less than 500 because the curve is going down. And if the interest is less, that means my principal now is more. So actually now my principal is like $251.25. Okay. And I would subtract that number off 99,750, and someone correct me because I'm doing this from memory, it's like 99,498.75 now. All right, and if I wanted to ask you for the third payment, you literally would now take 6% of 99,498.75, divided by six, subtract that, get your principal amount, do it again. Now, if I did that same calculation 360 times, why 360? Because that's the length of the um, loan. That's the length of the loan, 30-year loan. Guess mm -hmm. what my last number is going to be as for my balance of loan? Zero, right? Right. I.e., or that is, or therefore, you paid your loan off. And that's how it works. You pay this 30-year AM, and you pay into 750 a month, but every month it's a different portion of each one, making that curve go down. So at the very last one, when you make your payment, your balance is zero and you've paid your loan off. That's a 30 year AM. If it goes to zero, here, 
you hear that you see the term sometime called it is fully amortized meaning you went the whole 360 payments all right fully am expect one of these on your exam all right now the math is the same. I could ask you after the fifth payment because the math would be the same, but it would be very tedious. So I think they only ask after the first payment because after that, it's the same. You just divide by, multiply by the interest rate, divide by six, subtract it from the payment. That difference is your principal, yada, yada, yada. All right. <clears throat> So that is the amortized loan. Now, the next loan is the one that you hear a lot about and heard a lot about there for a number of years is called the adjustable rate loan or the slang is an arm, an arm. Remember in the amortized loan, I told you that 6% was fixed meaning it's 6% the entire life of the loan. This is an adjustable rate. It will change throughout the balance of the loan. Now, when you think about an arm, there are three and a fourth thing you have to understand about the arm. So let's go through this real quick. The most important thing that you need to know about an arm is that it is tied to some financial index. All right? Like prime rate, the 30 year treasury, the 10 year treasury. It can be tied, <coughs> excuse me. It can be tied to any financial indicator the bank wants to tie it to, all right? It is their decision because they are the ones loaning the money to you. But they will tell you what it is. Hey, son, I will give you an adjustable rate. It's tied to the prime rate, okay. I can track the prime rate. It's in the Wall Street Journal. I can track the 10 year in index. It's in the journal, Wall Street Journal. So, whatever the base that it's tied to will be disclosed to you. Buddy of mine has a arm. His is tied to this index, and you do not need to know this, called LIBOR. LIBOR is the London Interbank Offer Rate. Don't write that down, not a big deal, just telling you for this example. It is a English equivalent to our Fed rate. When he got his arm, they had tied it to LIBOR, which at the time was 0.3%. All right, LIBOR is traditionally used for a lot of high-end homes, big numbers, 800, 900, because the interest rate is so low. Like I said, in this example I wanna show you, his was 0.3%, all right? So the first thing you need to know is it's tied to some index. The second thing you need to know is to that index, they will add a margin, a margin. All right, so let's take a side note for a second just so we can get it. When you guys go to Walmart and you buy something, let's say it's a dollar, they just charge you a dollar, right? That's what you pay. That would be the equivalent to what we just talked about, the level payment loan, dollar. Could they charge you this? Think about this. 
Could they charge you our price plus a quarter and literally tell you, Ross, you're going to pay our, plot, our price plus a quarter. They could do that if they wanted to. That's what this loan is telling you. All right. It is the financial index plus some margin. So in this example of Andy's loan, his was plus 3%. So in the beginning, how much was Andy's interest rate? It's the index plus the margin. So in Andy's particular case, when he started his loan, was 3.3%. Everybody see that? So when he got his loan, this is how they quoted it. Instead of telling Andy it's 3.3, they said, Andy, it's LIBOR plus three. They told him the base and the margin. It's LIBOR plus three. Walmart could have said, our cost plus a quarter. All right? Now, what this allows the bank to do, which by the way, how much is the bank making on this loan? Three percent, right? They're telling Andy it's LIBOR, our price plus 3%. Walmart is telling you our price plus a quarter, how much is Walmart making? They're making a quarter. They could tell you that. Now they don't, they just give you the $1 and they don't show you the profit versus the cost, but they could literally say that widget is our price plus a quarter, so whatever we paid for it, you're paying a quarter more. And that's how we make our money. Same scenario. The bank is telling you that you're paying LIBOR, which is what the bank is paying for the money, plus 3%. Now, here's why they do it this way. If this is the boat in the water, and here's the ladder, when the water goes up, what happens to the boat? It goes up with it. So therefore, the profit will always be 3%. All right, let's play another example. If Walmart told you that you're going to pay a dollar and all of a sudden their cost became a dollar and a penny, they're actually losing money because it costs them more than you paying. But what if they said it's our price plus a quarter? Now, if their price goes up to a dollar one, you're still paying a quarter above it. The price has adjusted. That's what this rate does here. If LIBOR goes up, Andy's interest rate will go which direction? Up because his is LIBOR plus 3%. So no matter what LIBOR does, Andy's always paying the margin 
more than the LIBOR rate. It's adjusting, hence the word adjustable rate. Are we good with the concept? Because that is the hardest part in this adjustable rate, is understanding the rate is adjusting based on this financial indicator and some margin on top of it, so that when the indicator goes up, so does the margin, it goes up, all right? That is called an adjustable rate mortgage. If it costs the bank more money, Andy's gonna pay more money. If the bank pays less, then Andy's will go down as well. Did you say that the, that is always fixed, the, mar the margin's always fixed or not necessarily? The margin will always be the same throughout the life of the loan. Okay. And it will be disclosed to you or to your client, and they will disclose it exactly like I just said. They will tell your client it's LIBOR plus 3%. Okay. That 3%, I don't want to use the word fixed because I don't want you to confuse it with a fixed interest rate. That 3% okay. is always the same throughout the life of the loan. What changes is that base financial indicator goes up. Okay. Once again, it's kind of like what I said, if the pool is here and the boat is here, when the water in the pool goes up, the boat goes up with it. And it goes up the same amount all the time. As the water goes down, the, pool, the boat would go down as well. It would always stay 3% in this example above it could be any number. It's whatever the bank. It could be LIBOR plus a half. It could be LIBOR plus six. It could be the 10-year treasury note plus 3%. It's whatever the bank product is they offer. The key is they will tell you the indicator and they will tell you the margin and that's how they quote it to you. Raymond, your loan is gonna be prime rate plus one. All right, I can look up the prime rate and then I add one to it and that's my interest this month. Cool? Now, these next two items are in place to protect the consumer. All right, so these next two things here, the third thing you have to know is this thing called a rate cap, can't write very well, a rate cap. There are two of them, periodic and lifetime. In Andy's example, his periodic was plus or minus 1%. His lifetime was plus or minus 6%. Let me get back to your faces so I can see. All right, so what this rate cap does is it protects the consumer so that there is not a large fluctuation from change to change, all right? In this example, we used LIBOR as the base. And what did I say LIBOR's rate was in this example? 0.3. What happens if the world hits a pandemic and LIBOR jumps to 20 tomorrow. Andy's interest rate would go from here to yeah. here. His monthly payment last month was 900. Now because of the rate, this month's payment's 27,000. You see the problem in that? So what the banks do to protect the consumer 
is they put this periodic change maximum on Andy's loan. So if LIBOR is at 0.3, and all of a sudden it goes to 20, in Andy's situation, it's plus or minus one. So the most Andy's could go up to is what? 1.3, right? He started at 0 0.3, 0 0.3. It changed, that's the period. The most it could change in one period is 1%. We go back and show you that screen. The most it could change per period is 1%. So even if the LIBOR goes from 0.3 to 20, Andes can only go up to 1.3 because that's the periodic change in that loan. That protects Andy from going from an $800 a month to next month being $27,000, all right? Now, the next month after that, it may go up one more percent to 2.3. Then it may go to 3.3, then 4.3, then 5.3, then 6.3. Then what happens? Is it the it life? stops because the life of the loan is six. Is six. So in this particular example, even though LIBOR went to 20, the most Andes is going to go up is to 6.3 plus his margin of 0.3 would be 9.3%, which if you notice, his original was what, 3.3? Mm -hmm. And I told you the maximum is six, there's six. So they put these rate caps in to protect the consumer so that they're never going to be put in a position where they're Payment is 900, then 2,700, and then 4,000. They put the caps in. They put one in per period, and they put one in for the life. And those can be any number, by the way. One and six were just my example. It could be two and 10. It could be one and four. The bank will tell you you're getting a LIBOR plus three, and the rate caps are 2% and 8%. All of that will be disclosed to the consumer. Question? So if, because uh, you said it's 1% give or take, is that, or I mean like plus or minus, is that like also if the percentage was three and it dropped down to one, would you only go down 1% that period and then? Good question, and yes. Okay. Suppose he gets to 6.3, which 9.3, that's his maximum, right? Mm -hmm. And then LIBOR drops all the way back down again to 0.3. He would only go down 1%. It's plus or minus that period change. And mm -hmm. the idea there is, Kristen, is to make up for what the investor lost when it was here. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of they're going to get it back because they're buying the money here and Andy's only coming down 1%. Okay. So they're going to make some money back there. So good question, good point. It's <clears throat> plus or minus 1%. Now, the other point is it's plus or minus maximum 1%. It could only go up half, and that's fine. It does not have to go by 1%. That's just the maximum it can go up. So if it went from 0.3 to 
And this could go from 3.3 to 3.8, half a percent, because that's allowed. It couldn't go 1.1% because one is the max in this example.